Good morning. <clears throat> Please stand for the presentation of colors by the Newport News Police Honor Guard, the singing of the national anthem by Ms. Brianna Jean, followed by the Newport News Pipes and Drums Band. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight as whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rockets regular the bombs bursting in air gave proof to the night 
that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the Department's basic law enforcement 23rd Academy graduation. Welcome distinguished visitors, recruit family members, personnel, and recruiting staff. I would also like to introduce those seated on the stage. Pastor Wes Taylor will now deliver the invitation. Scripture says, 
says in Romans 13 that those who serve in authority are God's servants. They are there to serve for our good. And I believe that perfectly describes the one of our good men. And so I just want to say, on behalf of Simple Bible Church, thank you for serving. It is to be able to put those things together for us. Let's pray together. Lord Jesus, we come to you today. We thank you for the many blessings that we woke up with this morning. Uh, but today morning. we want to especially give thanks to you for the men and women who serve this welcome community. Welcome the Newport News Police Department, Basic Law Enforcement, graduates, and welcome the Newport News Police Department, the Basic Law Enforcement, in such a profound 23rd way, such Academy an graduation. Place. And we pray that this welcome day distinguished will be a day that they will remember members, for the rest of their lives. Personnel, we pray that you watch over them. Grant them also wisdom, like to and grace and strength for the job that you call them to do. We thank you for Chief Drew and for his leadership in our town. Thank you for each and every person here who is serving to make this community a better place. We pray, Father, that your grace will be upon them. For meet with us on this occasion, and we thank you for all our blessings. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Joining us to my right in the crowd, we have Assistant City Manager Thank you, Pastor Taylor. have been so generous and supportive to the department, and we want you to know how much we appreciate it, especially our lab and display. We have reached out to several other uh, places around the um, Lord Jesus, we come to you today. The Bogotta came to work for us, and not only do they allow us to do the graduation here, they also allow us to do training here, which I um, took place upstairs and got shot several times. So, uh, But thank you. We truly thank you. It is my pleasure to now introduce Kayla Richard, a young adult police commissioner and student at Ward High School. Today we want to now deliver some give thanks to you for the men and women who serve this welcome community. Welcome the Newport News Police Department, we the Basic Law Enforcement, the Newport News Police Department, the Basic Law Enforcement, 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 the Basic
noticed. Uh, and well, he didn't wait for something bad to happen. Always, or who you he like. got out in front of the problem, he spoke up and made change. To the new group of police officers here today, I leave you with one question. Are you here to say that I wake up and make change? I question whether or not I'm going to cut out the crisis. has excellent water pressure. A five second ride of a taser will make Jones take off like a spaceship. The NNPD canines can carry Cleveland like a chew toy. And OC spray is highly effective. We also learned about Recruit Not Funny being entrepreneurial. Now that's the incredible part about, being, about throwing a random group of people together and expecting them to overcome difficult challenges as a team. On day one, all I could tell you was that we were terrible at ironing pants and shining boots. Today, looking at these amazing people behind me, I can tell you all about the lifelong memories that we have shared. I can also tell you why this profession means so much to us. We were asked that question almost every time a new instructor came into the room. Why do you want to be here? Now, at first, we didn't really realize how profound this question actually was. But through soul searching and a whole lot of sleepless nights, we realized that our common interest was helping people. 
we found that we all share the same purpose. God put us on this earth to help others. The law enforcement community's purpose is to help, to be there on the worst day of people's lives, to help eradicate crime in the community, to help make the community a better place to live, to protect everything in our city, to protect you in your time of need. That is our common goal. That is our purpose. We are here to help. The reason that we are sitting on this stage in front of you is not because of what we wish to find in our bank accounts, but because of the good we wish to bring to our community. So the next time somebody asks us why do we want to be here, we will confidently tell them because we have a sense of pride in our community that we cherish, and our purpose in life is to serve and protect that community. We don't do it for the money, the power, the cool cars, or the shiny badges. The greatest thing that this job has to offer is something intangible, something that no other profession could offer. We do it to fulfill our sense of purpose and to help others. Thank you. The BLE coordinators, Master Police Officer Michael Call and Officer Nicholas Hammerhan will now present the James D. Fox Award. James Fox began his law enforcement career while attending college. He was a dispatcher, a police officer, a sergeant for the Virginia Commonwealth University Police Department. He was hired by Henrico, Henrico County Police Department in 1973, where he rose through the ranks and promoted to the rank of assistant chief in 1991. He retired from Henrico in February 2004. Chief Fox began his tenure with the Newport News Police Department on August 1, 2004. As chief of police, he worked tirelessly to reduce the crime and build the city of Newport News into a vibrant, growing community. He retired from our department in law enforcement uh, in September 1, 2013. Throughout his career, Chief Fox had a passion for leadership and excellence. In all aspects of policing, he had a vision to provide the best possible training to Newport News recruits and felt being an independent police academy was a critical step to accomplishing this. Throughout his tireless leadership and vision, the Newport News Training Academy became an independent academy in 2009. And today we graduate our 23rd class. We appreciate his leadership and dedication to the safety of our community and his tireless efforts into making the Newport News Police Department one of excellence. Our status as an independent and nationally accredited training academy is one of his many legacies that he gave to us. The James D. Fox Award for Excellence is appropriately presented to the graduate of the Newport News Police Department's Basic Law Enforcement Training Academy who displays academic performance, teamwork, leadership, passion, character, and commitment. The Academy Training Staff selects the award recipient based on the recruit's overall performance in these areas during the entire 22-week-long Academy session. It is my privilege to announce the recipient of the James D. Fox Award of Excellence goes to recruit and soon-to-be officer Krista Hepler. I should have had you to keep on standing, sorry, sir. Chief Steve Drew <laughs> will now offer remarks. Good morning. I apologize for uh, being a little late this morning. It was a long night for most of us that are here, including our assistant city managers and our city manager. We started uh, yesterday with a group that wanted to uh, to exercise their First and Second Amendment rights. They came to headquarters, we had some conversations, and there were some tense, some concerns. But I will tell you, with the leadership and the individuals that make up this law enforcement community, our federal and state partners, and the men and women in the Newport News Police Department, that incident, that protest, rally, demonstration ended without any incidents whatsoever. And that's something to be proud of. When we look at law enforcement across the country, we certainly see cities that are struggling with challenges and 
difficulties and issues that face every one of us. But how we handle those issues, how we respond, how we prepare, how we work with our communities on the front end, I think sets a tone of where we're at today. Now, LT, I do have some concerns. I see we have the finest men and women of the United States military here today. I don't know, are they recruiting or are we recruiting? I got, some, I got some concerns, and they're strategically placed in the audience. So, Bo, I don't, I don't know. Did you have anything to do with that? I, 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 don't, I don't know. But I, I do appreciate all of your service for what you do for this country. You know, you should be recognized. So we're going to take a second and do that. Thank you. I want to thank you all for being here today. It means a lot. As I look around the room, before I talk to the class, I first want to say thank you to the recruiters, Captain Bradley, the background investigations and the recruiters you did, that you have, the work that you do. Lieutenant, you're kind of doing double duty. The late missions with the SWAT team last night. And Oh, let me, let me touch that for a minute. How about this? The Newport News Police Department SWAT team is led by a female. That's outstanding. <laughs> She does, an, she does an amazing job. She handled two operations last night, and I could not be more impressed. Miss Washington, did I hear you clap the loudest on that? <laughs> but uh, I, I appreciate you, Allison, for all the work that you did uh, planning and preparing. I know you had a lot of help, but at the end of the day, you were overseeing that. You did a great job with two incidents last night. But to the recruiters and the back investigators, I want to appreciate and tell you thank you for bringing the best talent to this organization. I know that Captain Bradley pushes you hard. I push him hard because I want good people here. Citizens of this city deserve it. And I want to say thank you and appreciate you. To my left, in the top rafters, is a class that just in a few months will sit where these young men and women are. See, we're overlapping academies now. Instead of doing one class every six months, we're doing three classes once every four months. So it puts a little pressure on the uh, the, the uh, training of our academy because we have classes doing some different things, but they're overlapping. But that's all right. When you bring in good talent, you put the right people in the right place, you see amazing things happen. I'm going to take this moment then to thank the, the, the academy, the instruction that you all do, the time that you invest in each one of these individuals. I appreciate your leadership. I know we've got some individuals here that had some late night last night as well. And uh, to you all, I appreciate the time that you invested in these men and women which is an investment in this city. I appreciate you and thank you. We have three precinct captains here in the second row where all of you are getting ready to go work for. They had a bid process. We got away from just deciding we're going to put five here and seven here. These captains sat down, worked with the recruit, the instructors, the training academy, and selected the needs that they have for their individual precincts. I think that's important. It vests the captains and the individuals that are going to come to their precinct. We call that ownership. Some parts of our city have a, 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 a large uh, I need to make sure that I have individuals who are bilingual that can communicate and work well with that growing population in our city. That's important. Individuals that may need more females, may need more males, more senior officers. We talk about diversity. It's a lot more than just skin color. It's also about your background, what you bring to the table. I am here to tell you that the men and women to my left deserve to be here today. They worked hard. They went through a lot. So much so that in one week of the academy, we take a break, and we pull them out, and we invest them in the citizens that they are signing on to serve. We call that community week, and they do different things with churches and organizations, whether it's individuals who struggle with addiction, those that are faced with issues of homelessness, youth, they get invested. They walk our communities, people. They talk to elderly people. They talk to our residents, right, that make up this diverse community in this great city. 
we do that because all the book learning and the, and the PowerPoint, at the end of the day, it's really about how we relate to people. We can put all the policies and procedures that we want. We can underline them and surround them in quotes and highlight them. But at the end of the day, when you talk about police reform, it's about what's inside an individual's heart and mind, about how they care and what they value people and how they address and in, interact with citizens. And that, that is what I'm looking for to join this department. That is the direction we're going. Recruit Venezuela, are you up here? Sure. I met with you all, with Chief Randall and Chief Hudgens the other day, and I ask you, the next 25 years of your career, now, that is 25 years, not three, not five, that's 25. <laughs> City manager at 25. I ask you to do one thing for me. The 25 years and all the things that you do, I ask this class to do one thing for me. Do you remember what that was? Yes, sir. I hope you get it right. Don't make me look bad up here. <laughs> what was that? To have positive interaction with the youth every day, sir. Thank you. I didn't forget my place, I just got joked up. Last night, I guess it was about 1 a.m. I, I, I'm not a technical guy, I learned a little bit about it. I guess you can go on the internet or through your computer and you can type in false calls. So apparently last night about 1 a.m. there was a call put in that there was an individual, his daughter was dying in the house. And if the police came, that he would open fire when they got there. So after being up probably since 8 in the morning till about midnight, maybe, they'd probably been home about an hour. SWAT team was activated. Chief Randall and myself responded. We started trying to make phone calls to make contact with this individual in the house where our dispatchers were able to say this is where the call came from. It was all through digital. Long story short, the individual that lived there that identified himself as the, as the parent or the, who, who resides at that address, he was at work. He was working. His wife was inside asleep, and his four-year-old four daughter was there. Was there a SWAT situation? Was there a dangerous situation? His officers surrounded the house and began to make call-outs. We were able to get in contact with the, the owner of the house, and, and he, was, he, he was working in the central, central part of the city. And uh, we were able to get an officer. He was very, very concerned about his family. We were able to get an officer there and bring him to where we were stationed. And then uh, SWAT members... SWAT members entered that house. They were able to get the, and there was a four-year-old four little girl. Can you imagine that little girl waking up and seeing the mutant ninja turtles walk through her house? Because they all wear green, right? But the way they took care of that little girl, and they brought her together back with her family, and we tried to figure out just what had happened, how did this occur? I had talked to Mr. Archer about it at 5 in the morning. Sorry to wake you up. We had a conversation about how that occurs. But what impressed me was the way that those men and women took care of that family. And when I talked to the father, tears rolled down his face. And he was so thankful for the police department and the way he was treated and his family. <laughs> Lieutenant, 
Well, I give him a hard time. But Lieutenant Hauser called me this morning. Apparently, she is a big fan of, uh, no, I'm going to get this wrong, Frozen. Who's the main character in Frozen? I know you all know. Elsa, does that sound right? Can I get a head nod? Is it Elsa? So we're going to go back and have some time with her, some time with her next week. But that touched me, man. That touched me. These guys were up all night. Went home and got about maybe 45 minutes, if they were lucky. And it took care of that family. So when we talk about law enforcement, we talk about reform. We talk about service. And we talk about taking care of our community. That's what they're doing. All the things that you see across our TV screen and scrolls the bottom, all the things going on in this country. And men and women still want to come here, just like the United States military, protect this country. They want to come here and protect this city, this community. That means a lot to me. That's valuable. That's the people that I'm looking for. Like our young adult police commissioners. Those that have served and are serving. What a great speech, Representative Warwick High School. He did an amazing job. Thank you. Those that sing our national anthem with such power. Don't be dissuaded with what you see around the country. Stay focused on what we're doing in our mission. To this recruit class, stay focused on why you're here. You were not selected because of where you live or your address. You were selected because you were the best candidates to join this department. And your number one goal is to serve the citizens of this community, to treat them with pride and respect, to have empathy and understanding, to take care of people, people that are challenged with crime in their communities, people that suffer from drug addiction or homelessness, mental illness, as we try to find better and better ways to address those issues. He may get upset, I point him out. But behind the scenes, he, he said, you know, we're, we're having these individuals that, that are homeless or have some mental illness that they come to court because they hang out in some areas. And the business owners get frustrated and, and, and citizens, patrons get frustrated. So what happens? They call the police. And we try to work with them, but times they get arrested. They come to his courtroom. So he says, instead of just sitting at the bench and making decisions, he comes up with a program with Four Oaks, our, our uh, center, where we try to develop work skills and relationships and connections and resources. He brokers a deal. Is that the right way to say it? Brokers a deal? Is that good? Brokers a deal that says, hey, look, if your officers come into contact with individuals who are struggling, we're going to work with Four Oaks, right? They're going to come and pick up those individuals so they don't get arrested. They don't go into a courtroom. They go get help. That's innovative thinking. I don't know. Maybe he saw it somewhere, read it somewhere, or maybe he just looked at a situation and said, what can I do better? And now we have a partnership with Captain Bullhurst in South Precinct that if officers come in contact with individuals who have those struggles, that it's not about arrests, it's about getting them hooked up with resources. That's leadership to me. That's thinking outside the box. That is not responding to a call 25 years ago, may, maybe or maybe not making an arrest, and going on to the next call. That's leadership today. And that's what I'm asking this recruit class to do. Did you guys come out and go to your individual precincts and you work with your field training officers, I ask you to learn from them. I believe that you have the best training on the East Coast, and I have seen several police departments, and I have worked with several different, we had several entities working with us last night, and all of them talked about the professionalism, the strategy that this department has. When departments across the country are calling Captain Bradley, how do you do that recruit class? How do you get those background investigations done? How do you continue to have people join your department when we see them leaving others? I would suggest to you that is because of how we treat people here, what we emphasize here. I told the class when we talked to them, myself and Chief Randall, I've said it before to the class coming up and to the officers that are here. 
25 years, right? Right? Yes, sir. 25 years later, you will not remember the number of guns you seize, the number of arrests you make, or the number of traffic tickets you write. Those things are necessary, I get it. But what you will remember is the individuals that you help. Like youth of our city, or four-year-old little girls. That's what you will remember. And that's what I ask you to do. To treat individuals in this city that you come in contact with the way you are treated. I do not want to be a headline in this city unless it says Newport News Police Department, this is what they're doing, this is the cutting edge. Like if Chief Hudgens, who, if, he, if he was here today modeling a program after Seattle, he worked with Mr. Archer. I didn't ask him to come up with the program, he created it. He sat down with our assistant city manager and found a better way to address issues with homelessness and mental illness. That instead of police being the first responders to those individuals, that we work with our fire department and our clinical physicians. Now we still have to go to those calls. I understand that. Sometimes bad things happen. But we don't have to be the first individuals that they have interaction with. And Chief Hudgens put that program together. I did not have, know how it would go over. We sat down with Mr. Archer, our assistant city manager, and he was the instrument that pushed it forward. It was our city manager that signed off on it and wanted to see something different. That's leadership. We do not, we do not have to do the things the same way that we did in when, Jerry? 1985. It is okay to change. And in this profession, sometimes that's hard. We don't like things the way they are, but we sure don't want to change anything. But that's police reform, making a difference. But if we stay focused on what our purpose and what our cause is, the citizens of this city, the men and women we serve, our neighborhoods and our communities, our partnering with our faith-based communities, the different resources, we will succeed. I would submit to you that the face of police reform sits to my left, and I'm excited to have them here. And they worked hard to be here. And I know that they would not have walked across the finish line if it was not for individuals here, their family members and loved ones. I appreciate you being here today, the investment that you make. You're going to get some calls, and you're going to hear how excited they are that they made a traffic stop. That's all right. I do not call my dad anymore and tell him about a traffic stop. You know what I tell him? We had a peaceful night in our city. Thank you guys for being here. Thank you for the next recruit class that will sit up here in just a few months. All of you for 25 years. <laughs> but today, I want to thank this recruit class to my left. I could not be more proud of you. In just a short time, we're going to meet down here. Myself and Chief Randall are going to present you with a badge, and your family members are going to pin it on. Recruit Washington, where are you at? Even you thinking some people might not be here. She told me she wasn't going to miss this for the world. Hope you get the bad badge pinning right, though. We are blessed in this city. By God's grace, the citizens who live, work, raise a family here, our leadership, our elected officials, I will tell you, we have a strong governing body in this city. And it is a blessing and an honor to have such a close relationship. They ask hard questions and they demand excellence. And I'm okay with that. It's the way it should be. And it is an honor to work with them. We have government leaders that are vested in doing what's best for this city. And sometimes they have to make hard decisions, just like you all will. Remember where your heart is. Make sure that you have good alignment between your head and your heart. Remember the training that you have provided and grow every day. I want to thank Lindsay Strickland, the HR department. I know Karen, I don't think, could be here today. But uh, you talk about pushing somebody hard. Let's get those backgrounds done. Let's get the paperwork signed. Get it over. Get it back. Let's get people sworn in. Let's get here. I appreciate you, Lindsay, for the work that you've done. Brought in great people. So I'm going to get out of the way. I've talked way too long. But I do want to say thank you to your families.
all of you. Thank you for sharing your loved ones with us. They will be treated like a member of a family here. And I will tell you this. You're never going to get 180,000 people to agree on anything. But this community supports this police department. I have seen it. They support this department. I see emails and phone calls. Do we make mistakes? Yes. Is it okay to say we're sorry? Yes. Should we try to do better? Every day. But what we do, what we do makes a difference. God bless each and every one of you. I look forward to seeing you and your family members down front. Okay? The Honorable Matthew Hoffman will now swear in the graduates. So this is the technical aspect of the program, and I'm the only thing standing between you and that badge down there, ladies and gentlemen. Usually, uh, this position doesn't get to speak, but Chief Drew gives me some leeway to make, make and mention a few words. Um, I was a prosecutor back in 1996 when I started. A number of the brass down there remember me as their prosecutor on a number of their cases. And this is, this event that I get to do two or three times a year is my favorite role as a judge, hands down. And I appreciate the police department having the faith that I can perform this duty and this responsibility to share with you and my community the importance of having new officers on our staff. And ladies and gentlemen, um, I want to leave you with three things. Um, as you uh, get your badge and as you think about when you're out on that street, um, the first thing I want you to be is prepared. I want you to be prepared when I see you in court. I want you to be prepared for when you walk out of that patrol car and interact with the members of our community that we see day in and day out. Because they do care, and they do care about you, and you should care about them. The second thing I want to tell you is be kind. If you can show kindness to everyone that you come into contact with, you will spread that kindness around this community that we have, and it will be a safer place for you and for all of us who live in this community. And finally, the last thing I want to give you is I want you to give hope as you step out of that police car with every person that you come into contact with. Give them hope that there is a brighter day ahead for them. Give them hope that this community cares about them and that we have the resources to provide for them, provide their safety, and provide them with a happy, safe, and comfortable life here in the city of Newport News. And you're the first line to do that. And I will try to do that from the bench every day, and I want you to share that with them on the road as well. Ladies and gentlemen, please raise your right hands. Repeat after me. On my honor, I will never betray my badge, my integrity, my character, or the public trust. I will always have the courage to hold myself and others accountable for our actions. I will always uphold the Constitution and the community I serve. So help me God. We will also sign the following oath uh, after you all are penned. Please once again raise your right hands. I, and please state your name. I, Do solemnly swear or affirm that I will support the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the Commonwealth of Virginia and that I will faithfully and impartially discharge and perform all the duties incumbent upon me as a probationary police officer for the city of Newport News, for the city of Newport News. According, to the according to the best of my ability, so help me God. So help me God. Thank you very much.
MPO Ham and Heron and now MPO Call will now present the badges. We'll now move into the uh, badge and certificate presentations. That was all planned, by the way. <laughs> As I call your name, please join Chief Drew down in front with your family. <clears throat> Officer Jordan Allen. Officer Nyambi Arulian. Officer Brooke Cleveland. Officer Catherine Craig.
Officer Cheyenne Flournoy. Officer Krista Hepler. Officer Jermaine Jones. Officer Jude Poley.
Officer Zachary Morrison. Officer Adam Sabine. Officer Christopher Smith. Officer Carlos Sullivan. Officer Dolores Valenzuela.
Officer Jeremiah Washington. <laughs> Officer Zachary White. Assistant Chief Eric Randall will now administer the oath of honor. As in tradition with Newport News Police Department at a police academy graduation, I would ask that all sworn, active and retired, Please stand and join me in the oath of honor. Right hand and repeat after me. On my honor, On my honor I, will never my badge, I will never betray my badge, my integrity, my, integrity, 
my character, character. or the public trust. trust. I will always have the courage courage. to hold myself and others others. accountable for our actions. actions. I will always uphold the Constitution Constitution. and the community I serve. serve. So So help me God. Thank you. Today, you have taken a note to wear the badge and make it better. Welcome to the New York Police Department. Family. Be safe and good luck. All right, come on. Y'all can do better than that. This is a joyous day. Come on. Here, go. Pastor Taylor, will you please come forward to deliver the benediction? Wow. I mean, what a ceremony. Congratulations to all of you. Uh, I wish everybody could see this. I really sincerely do. And uh, Chief Drew, I want you to know that our church is always open We're always going to be a friend of this police department. However, we can serve you. You let us know. Um, I'm one of the pastors here. Uh, The other one is Matt Beagle. I couldn't be here last time because something outside of my power prevented me from doing so. Let me just say um, personally that we love and appreciate and respect our police. And if there is any way that we can help you on a personal level, our door is always open. Uh, If you want to come by and have a conversation, I can't promise you I will answer all your questions, but we will listen well, we'll drink a lot of coffee with you, and we will always support you. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we thank you for those who have answered the call to be public servants, and what a tremendous calling that really is. Father, I pray that you watch over the men and women of this department that you protect them from harm, that you give them wisdom and discernment and help them to know that there are friends and family who love and care about them, who are praying for them, that people of faith who stand with them and lift them up before your throne. We pray that uh, however long they serve, the 25 years plus, Lord, that these will be blessed days that they will grow, that you will use them in profound ways to make a difference in this community, that their their job as public servants will uh, be more blessing than heartache. Bless the leadership of this town, over this department. Bless each and every officer, I pray, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you for coming this morning in support of our new officers. Please stand for the recessional. 